Welcome along to the channel guys and welcome to another first ride video. I'm back at Barnstormer BMW in Alton and they very kindly let me loose on the brand new F900 GS. Now this is uh, a new bike from BMW, obviously it's based on the F900R and the F900XR, like the one over there, so it's that platform but built for the new GS. This replaces the old 850 model. New suspension, uprated engine, 14 kilos lighter than the old 850. It's all geared up for a bit more off-road, a bit more of a serious motorcycle, shall we say. So we're going to take this out for a little bit of a spin around the local countryside. So if you're interested in the new F900 GS, get yourself a cup of tea and chop the roll the intro. good doesn't it <laughs> it does look good doesn't it so this is the uh tro so this one's in the trophy colors okay this one also has i think the enduro pack look at the twiddler on the back there i like the look of that so this has got the enduro pack which i think gives you the sure shower suspension slightly uprated you know titanium coated fork stanchions 230 millimeters of travel up front 215 at the rear tubed tubeless tyres on this one as well. I think the wheels might be slightly different. Um, the bikes all come with the Acra can now. That's part of getting more power out of this engine really because this is now 105 horsepower. So you know it's broken the 100 horsepower mark. That's actually more than the old Africa Twin. 220 kilos fully fueled. 14 and a half litre fuel tank now. So the fuel size has dropped by half a litre compared to the old 850 model and the tank is now plastic to save weight because this is 14 kilos lighter than the outgoing bike very sort of enduro-esque looking isn't it you, you know this thing's going to be pretty darn decent off-road bash plate on the with the enduro pack and also the m sport chain as well anyway let's just jump aboard jumping on it's got a nice feel actually it looks like quite a big bike yeah, actually, there's more bike in front of me than the, uh, the R1300 GS, actually. It's got more of a big bike feel. So I've just noticed this bike's got a little warning on there, and I think that's to do with the first service, because this is a new machine. It's only got 54 miles on it, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with it, but I think that is something to do with the first service, that little warning there. I'll have a play around to confirm. Riding position has been tweaked. This, this enduro pack actually raises the handlebars a little bit and I think it actually lowers the pegs a little bit. Yeah, and stood up, that's got a really nice feel to it. Sort of grip it, quite thin in the middle, gripping it with your, with your thighs and your calves. Yeah, that you can tell this, this, this is a nice position for off-road. Very, very, I'm six foot two and I even find this comfortable stood up on it so I think BMW very much sort of made this a serious contender if you're one of those folk who likes to take their middleweight adventure bike off road who do people do that do, do people actually do that or was that just a marketing thing I know some people do that but it's quite nice on this bike if you no intention of going off road then you don't need the enduro enduro pack so the enduro packs there if you want it if you want to go off road the engine's been uh, bored out a little bit. It's also got a different cylinder head, forged pistons, higher compression. So it's been tuned. It's been tuned basically to 105 horsepower, 93 newton meters of torque. And even in six gear, look, there's a lot of drive. Shouldn't chug it too much. We are running it in. But there's a lot of drive from that engine. The seat feels quite thin. Like I say, this this is the enduro one, and I think you get maybe you get a different seat, but it's it's not particularly wide in the middle to keep the bike thin in the middle for going off road. Like I say, the bars are really high on this. I think they're 14 millimeters higher than the the bars if you don't have the enduro pack. But I'm finding this really really comfortable. Very wide bars. I think they're maybe slightly wider wider as well on the enduro pack. Nice little hand guards with aluminium sort of fixings properly sturdy handguards none of these sort of wanging about ones properly sturdy handguards i think if you're going off-road you wouldn't have to upgrade any of that it's all built just to 
take it, hit the, hit the dirt. Oh, loads of pull. Yeah, it's got loads of mid-range. Loads of mid-range. The peak torque figure is higher than what it used to be. You know, in the F900R. Oh, it's got a lovely pickup, about 4,000 revs. And the actual feel and the ride, I mean, even though this is set up for an enduro setup, it's got a very planted feel to the tarmac. Instills quite a lot of confidence. The suspension feels quite firm as well. I think if you're going to go off road, you might want to you know, loosen up the twiddlies a little bit because it's got quite a sporty feel. It's not all wallowy. You go on the brakes, yeah, there's a bit of suspension dive, but it's not ridiculous amounts, you know? That mid range, really nice. Yeah, front brake is actually very nice. <laughs> there is a bit of suspension dive there, but it's got 230 mm travel. There's bound to be. But it's got a very really planted, sort of connected feeling. Considering this is an it's got the Enduro pack with a different suspension, it's, it feels very nice on the road still. Six and a half inch TFT, typical, yeah, look, looks like every other GS you might ride. A smaller screen, which is actually set quite forward, isn't it? That screen's quite a long way away from you. Yeah, the whole bike looks quite big and a long way away from you. You know, a tiny screen on it, because of course, you know, this is an off-road adventure bike. So you get a smaller screen, so that's the first upgrade, isn't it? Bigger screen, if you want to do some decent, decent distance. Yeah, it's got a really good pickup and drive, I think. Rear brake feels pretty good. And so the front feels really quite nice. Not as sharp, you know, it's not it's not really sharp. Again, you don't want stuff really sharp if you're gonna be going off-road, do you? But yeah, it's got quite a nice bit of feel from it. Quick shifter blipper, of course. Gearbox is lovely actually, really nice gearbox. I mean this is of course you know the, the cheaper version to the R1300. I say cheaper, this is still you know it still starts at £12,000 this bike. So it's it's not a cheap, you know, it's one of the more expensive middleweight adventure bikes by quite some margin. Then of course by the time you add what you want, I priced one up, the trophy paint scheme, which I think is next to 450 quid. Uh, the dynamic pack, which will give you the quick shifter blipper, you know, not 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 the enduro pack, because if I was pricing these up, I wouldn't have the enduro pack, and that came to about 14 with everything you're really going to want. So you're talking about 14,000 pounds for a bike which is specced up to where you're going to really want it in the real world. All the bikes come with the Akropovich. A bit quiet, doesn't sound. They never do those uh, street Akropoviches. It's got a nice sound to it, you know. Cross plane engine. Morning. That's when you want the quiet exhaust. Yeah, it's, it's very, very nice. <laughs> I can tell straight away. It's very, very nice. It feels a bit more sporty. And I'd say the V-Strom. The V-Strom is a softer machine. This feels a bit more sporty, a little bit more edgy even. It feels bigger than the Tenere. Physically, it, it is bigger than the Tenere. And it feels like it's a bigger bike in front of you. Obviously, more power than the Tenere. The seat, even though it's uh, not very wide, it's, it's quite, I think it's quite squishy foam. Yeah, it's got quite a lot of foam, quite squishy there. Feels nice, it's sort of moulded a little bit to your ass as well. I keep I keep not using the quick shifter blipper because <laughs> I'm used to riding the tenor. I've got used to not using the quick shifter blipper. Yeah, it's fast. It's a fast bike. You don't you don't need any more than that. That that's that's pretty darn quick actually. 105 horsepower. I mean that's more than the uh, Africa Twin. I know 2024 version's got more, but that's more power than the Africa Twin. A 900cc bike. Yeah, when the when the speed picks up, it's got a nice, it's got a sporty feel. Actually, you could hustle this. You could hustle this around some twisties. Feels a bit like the uh, R1300 from that respect. You know they. 
made their bikes, their adventure bikes, much more dynamic. And that's sort of coming across on here, actually. I, I like the feel to this. I think you can push this harder on the road than what you can the Tenere and the Bistro. Yeah, you've got plenty of support when you go on the brakes. There's not masses of weight transfer, which is what I'm really surprised about. What would this being a uh, stay there? This being the enduro packed version. Hang on, should we do a little? Should we do a little bit of gravel? I can't help myself. We've got the we've got the enduro pack. Let's just try a little bit of standing up, shall we? On the mucky stuff. Yeah, it's, it's very nice to stand up on. I like the feel of that. I don't want to go any worse than this because, as I say, this is Barnstormer's brand new demo. I don't want to risk slipping off, but I can tell that that's really nice. It's also got the old foot rear brake, which you can flip the what's it round, flip the pedal around to give you to raise the brake a bit so you can get to the brake easier when you stood up. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like I could tackle some uh, off-road on this bad boy, that's for sure. So there she is. I think you will agree that it's a handsome looking bike now. I think probably one of the best looking middleweight adventure bikes. I mean, the whole bike's been redesigned. It's now got the, you know, the new headlight. The headlight looks nice in there as well. I like the blacked out screen, hand guards. So starting at the front end, Brembo brakes now, listed as Brembo. And these, with the, with the Enduro pack, you get the black stanchions, the titanium tin coating on the stanchions. Always looks nice. And then the gold, gold shower suspension there. Steering damper, also nestled under there. You can get options for like the Headlight Pro and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure this one. You know, as, as usual, you know, you can spec this bike up as far as you want to go. A really nice little feature on bikes you are going to go off-road on is the, the adjustable footrest. The Tiger 900's got this. We flip that round, it raises the position of the uh, of the footrest. And I'm not no. I thought that might get in the way a bit, but I'm not noticing that little vertical bit. So, yeah, that that seems to work quite well. Fully adjustable suspension. We have nice gold clickers on the back there. New subframe on this bike that saved quite a lot of weight. That new subframe. And I think this must be the, the Enduro seat as well. That look, I'm not sure that seat's standard or not. A Kropovich NCAN on all the bikes now. So that Akropovich comes standard. It's quite big, isn't it? It's quite big, but I think they've got the angle quite nice on that. I, I don't mind that. That looks all right. That looks all right. Obviously, it helps to save a bit of weight as well when you're chucking the uh, Akropovich on a standard. As you can see, quite a slim machine. So quite a slim in the middle again. All to do with you off-roading that, isn't it? And then you've got a little, uh, I quite like a little neat little back end, actually. It's quite a neat, tidy little back end. I don't know how you get on with luggage. There doesn't seem to be any luggage mounting positions on there, so I don't know what the luggage situation is. Nice little remote preload adjuster. Let's wind it up to fatty spec, put a bit more in there, but there's loads of support, even as it was. Love the aluminium side stand adjustable knobble on the end of the gear lever as well so you can move that around which is quite a nice little feature isn't it without having to mess with any of the quick shifter elements you can adjust your foot position I like that switch gears your usual sort of bmw affair really you know, this won't be illuminated as they're not this switch gear this one's got the sos button and all of that fully adjustable up top with the forks as well quite nice on that one let's give it a click I do like these handguards, proper sturdy handguards. A lot of the adventure bikes are just have like a flimsy handguard. I think this must be something to do with the Enduro pack again, but I do like those. That's proper, proper handguard time. Dash is pretty uh, standard GS dash really. Looks exactly as what the same to me as what was on the R1300. So yeah, really nice dash. Still the best dash in the business. Is that screen adjustable? I don't think there's any adjustment on the screen. You know, that's it's just really a little enduro screen, that, isn't it? But uh, there we go. The new F900 GS. I think you agree. A really handsome looking bike. Let's jump back on. 
you can have electronic suspension and all that as well if you want you know this like I say with the enduro pack of course you don't I don't think you can have electronic suspension you get the manual stuff but you know you can go electronic if that's your bag gearbox is lovely quick shifter blipper it's got a real firm, a real, real firm. Look at the wind coming through there. It's proper blustery today. But it's got a real positive sort of feel to the, the gearbox. Yeah, really nice the way it clicks into gear there. Brilliant quick shifter blipper. One of those systems I think you can use in all, all scenarios. Yeah, and surprisingly sporty suspension. I'm really surprised. You know, I can feel exactly what the the vibrations coming through from the tarmac. It'd be interesting to try it actually without this uh, enduro kit to see if it, you still get as much feedback and feel as this. Oh, which way should we go? Do, do, do. I mean, these are the sorts of lanes. These are the sort of terrain, isn't it, for these sort of adventure bikes? Just when you're out exploring. I think also with the dynamic pack which this has got you get the cornering ABS you also get adjustable brake control as well and you get the additional modes because standard you only get road or rain on this one you've got the whole host of modes including the dynamic and the enduro and all that Woo! oh this is really good this is really nice yeah BMW you've done it again I think they've done it again. I don't feel like I need more power, you know. I think these middleweight adventure bikes are really where it's at, you know, with this sort of low weight. Around that 220 sort of weight is perfect, isn't it? That's like the perfect weight for these bikes. Any any more than that, and they just become a bit unmanageable when you're when you're pushing them around, when you're trying to live with them. Although like when you're riding them, as soon as you're rolling, it's fine, but it's living with that weight, just pushing it in there. It's a proper scratch, it's a proper fun, <laughs> proper fun little scratch of this. You can come out and have some proper, proper blatting fun on this. This is really good. I never thought it would be, I thought it was going to be, you know, geared up very much as, a, as an off-road bike and because of that the road manners would suffer, but absolutely not, absolutely not. It is a little bit stiffer, I'd say not as plush as, I say, the V-Strom, so maybe if you're going to do, you're thinking of doing big miles on the road, then maybe that sort of firmness and that sportiness would become a bit too much on a longer trip but I'd like to try one without this enduro pack to see if it brings a look it's a little bit softer then or whether it's still as firm and sporty as this I like that I like that a lot I like it I'd buy that for a dollar cruise control uh, doesn't have cruise control this one that must be an option surely cruise control is an option I can't see any cruise control which is unusual. You've got the button to turn everything off. Your wheelie button. Turn it back on again. But yeah, there's no cruise on this. Heat your grips. Absolute must. And they're on level three and they're really hot. BMW heat your grips are very nice. Absolutely needed in the British winter. But yeah, no cruise. I'd imagine cruise is an option. But I can't say for sure. The vibrations from the engine are actually really nice. You can't really notice Sort of much vibes at all. Obviously, it's cross plane, they've got dual balancing shafts in the engine. You can feel a little bit, you know, cross plane engines they do have character, <laughs> but they have you know a few little vibrations to them. But this is fine, you know, I'm getting nothing through the seat, tiny amount through the foot vex, absolutely tiny amount, and a little bit through the bars, but really not very much. Perfect, no, no, nothing to complain about there at all feels like quite a refined engine you know I think before I, mean, this, I think this is a Chinese built engine if I'm not wrong which they've developed here and before it felt a little bit raw a little bit unrefined 
I think with the work they've done on it, it's definitely feeling, I think, a little bit more refined now. Yeah, it's, it's turning into a really nice power plant. So I must say a massive thank you to Barnstorm or BMW for letting me loose on their brand new demo. Really appreciate it. I'll put links to Barnstorm below. Don't forget to go check them out. So there we go, a very, very quick ride on the F900 GS. First impressions, it's, it's really impressive. Much more sporty than I thought it was going to be. Beautiful engine. Now putting out decent power levels, you know, very, very decent power levels. I will borrow this again when BMW UK have their fleet of bikes and we'll borrow it for a couple of weeks, take it on a long run, see if that sportiness does become a bit more uncomfortable on a longer trip. That's going to be the test, I think. And we will, of course, also do a comparison with this with its rivals, the other, the other sort of off-roady focused middleweight adventure bike. So if you're interested in that, though, you're going to have to subscribe. So subscribe below and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Very, very nice. Thank you, Barnstormer.